The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Matthew 7, 21 through to 23, King James Version. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. This passage of Scripture is focused on believers. This passage of Scripture tells us that there will be some people who are surprised on the Day of Judgment. Who exactly are these people who will be surprised? They are the people who attended church. They are the people who watched videos like this. They are the people who claim to be children of God. And what the Bible tells us is that they will be surprised by the things that will happen on the Day of Judgment. The truth is, what really matters in salvation is not one's prayer you made 20 years ago. Salvation is not a mere verbal confession, and it is not spiritual works. Salvation is not prophesying, neither is it casting out devils. But salvation is knowing, knowing the one and only way to God the Father. Salvation is knowing Jesus and being known by Him. That is salvation at its core. Salvation is not connection with your church congregation. It is not a connection with your pastor. Salvation is our connection to Jesus Christ. Faith is something God can produce in you through the Holy Spirit. So it is God who opens your eyes to His grace and gives you the means to have faith. This may surprise you, but the truth is, belief without following the Lord Jesus Christ is simply belief. Anyone can believe in God intellectually. There are plenty of people out there who believe and know there is a God and hate Him. A perfect example of these types of people, or should I say spirits, are Satan and his demons. James. 219 you believe that there is one God you do well even the demons believe and tremble there is a massive difference in someone saying I believe in God and someone living out their salvation the Bible is clear that we must believe and we must follow but in order to follow we must first be saved church attendance is not what will make you known by Jesus Jesus said not everyone who calls him Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Just take a look at that statement. That is a shocking statement. This is something for us to think about. This is a big deal. This is not a joke at all. Imagine going to church all the time and you ending up in hell. This is a serious matter. Are you one of those people Jesus is referring to? I pray that you are not. Will you be surprised on the day of judgment? This is the truth coming out to you. This is a very difficult message to listen to, but it is still the truth. Jesus said, calling him Lord doesn't even mean he knows you. Even demons called Jesus Lord when they met him in the Bible. Look at this interaction between Jesus and the demoniac of Gadara, Luke 8, 26 through to 28. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, there he met him, a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I done with you, Jesus? Son of the Most High God, I beg you, do not torment me. Look at what these demons speaking through this man referred to Jesus as. They said, Jesus, Son of the Most High God. Jesus said that many people will come to him and say they have prophesied in his name. Many will say they have 
preached in his name. Many will say they have performed miracles in his name. Many will say they have big churches and branches around the world. Many will say they helped people, but Jesus will say he doesn't know them. This is something very heavy. This is something you don't want to hear. This is something you don't want to happen to you. Jesus will tell them to depart. These are the three scariest words you never want to hear. Depart from me. Do you want to hear this? After all the church attendance, after all the prayers you have prayed, do you want to be part of those who will hear this from Jesus? Do you want to be called a worker of iniquity? Do you want to be rejected and denied on the day of judgment? Jesus will say to them, depart. If you don't want Jesus to tell you to depart, there is something you must do, and it is to do the will of God. You need to do the will of God. The will of God for your life is to come unto repentance. The will of God for your life is for you not to cover up your mistakes, but confess them. The will of God for your life is that you accept the free gift of salvation. I must be clear, you cannot earn or work your way into heaven. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Accepting the free gift of God will develop a connection with the one way to God. Now, how can I make sure that on the day of judgment, Jesus Christ does not say these words to me. Depart from me. The simple answer is abide in Christ, and He will abide in you. He will be with you and make you yield good fruits. John 15, 4 through to 6. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in Christ, you will never wither, you will never be cut down and thrown in hell. Abide in Christ and follow Him. To abide in Christ is to have an intimate, close relationship with Jesus, so that you may know Him and He may know you, not just a superficial acquaintance on Sunday alone. To abide in Christ is living each day for Him. To abide in Christ is when Jesus Christ is your everything. To abide in Christ is not holding your salvation on anything you have ever done, but holding your salvation on His finished work on the cross. Abiding in Christ is taught in 1 John 2, 4 through to 6. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in Him. Whoever says he abides in Him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, King James Version. Wherefore seeing, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look unto Jesus, look unto him and not any other thing. While going to church, look to Jesus. While praying, look to Jesus. In everything you do, always look unto Jesus. Don't take your eyes off of Him. Focus on Jesus. You need to follow God and follow Him always. God doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want you to end badly. He wants you to repent. This is just His will for your life. He wants you to live in holiness. He wants you to do the right thing. 
2 Peter 3, 9, King James Version. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us worth, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Live in holiness. Hebrews 12, 14, King James Version. Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.